Okay, I'm back with my cup of coffee, and um, we will continue. Um, as I was saying, there was a whole there's a whole mess of virtualizations, and then um, towards the end of this list are things like user mode Linux, uh, uh, so-called UML, Box, which really kind of emulates the hardware. As a result, it's extremely slow. And QEMU, um, which is a cool virtualization in, um, it's a bit slow, but it doesn't work bad. Um, but it has been kind of a granddaddy, as I see it, of many of the other virtualizations. And so it still plays a key role. Um, in some ways, it uh, plays the role of um, um, that's where things get done that are incorporated into other um, other um, um, virtualizations that are more of a production production mode quality. Okay. Um, Next, we're going to talk just a little bit about, oh, the next thing I want to say is that um, when you install a, um, an operating system like, um, or a distribution like Fedora or um, OpenSUSE under um, a using virtualization, there's a few questions that come up and stuff. I have attached a video um, that um, was done on YouTube, that I found on YouTube by some English guy. And uh, it seems to do an excellent little demo on doing a installation of Ubuntu. If you're not on, under VMware, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, under VirtualBox, if you're not doing um, Ubuntu, but another distribution, that's just fine. This is still a useful video, uh, even though there will be a few details in the last half that won't be relevant to you. Um, basically, one of the things that I do want to say is installing an OS, basically, it's always the same. They Every distribution of Linux, every operating system has its own uh, cosmetics, its own nice little user interfaces that it puts over everything, and the bells and whistles. But down underneath, they all do the same thing. If you want to install an operating system, what do you have to do? Well, it's here. First thing, you need to... Um, have a small operating system on your DVD that you can boot into RAM um, because you're trying to run a computer, trying to run enough of a computer that you can run some commands um, it, without using the hard disk. So basically every distribution or every operating system, including Windows or DOS, has a small OS that boots and runs into RAM. Um, next thing, it gives you some options for partitioning your hard drive and reformatting your hard drive to suit the operating system in question. That happens whether you're doing Windows or whether you're doing a Ubuntu or whether you're doing um, OpenSUSE or Fedora, it doesn't matter. Um, next thing uh, is once the disk has been repartitioned and um, reformatted. Um, it will copy the OS from the DVD um, to the hard drive along with a lot of applications depending on the OS. Uh, some of the bigger Linuxes come with messes of applications. Um, some of the operating systems like Windows tend to be a little more bare bone uh, because they want you to buy all the applications. Okay, after that, it has to update the computer's MBR or master boot record um, so that when you turn the computer off and you turn it on, it will find the MBR and be able to boot 
the new system. Um, finally, it will tell you reboot your computer. And um, when it reboots the computer, it takes you into the new operating system. Sometimes it tells you to remove the DVD. Other times the DVD is arranged so it will boot off the hard drive automatically. Um, after that, most operating systems nowadays go out to the internet and install all the latest updates. A few of them don't do that yet, but, but the, all the best known ones do. Um, Finally, you have to do the site con, uh, configuration, like, you know, configure your printers, install users, um, set your root password or your administrator password, um, um, things of that type. But basically, they're all the same. Now, even though they look differently because all the bells and whistles and the cosmetics is all differently, different. And that's why a lot of us Unix people really like the command line. Uh, we're very biased towards the command line because we can because the command line does not change hardly at all from Linux to Linux. You can do one if you can do one distribution, you can do all of them, and it doesn't change very much when you go to a, a non-Linux Unix such as Solaris or um, um, IBM AIX or uh, uh, FreeBSD, OpenBSD. Um, there's little changes there. Some of the special files are named differently and stuff, but 97% um, of everything is the same. Yeah, 95%. Okay. Um, I will add a few, <coughs> make just a couple other comments before we leave here in terms of hardware that can make your life easier. Um, one thing I like is live di distributions. And I'll talk a little bit about distributions in a different video. But I, I do like live distributions. They give me a chance to test out hardware before I uh, um, commit to it. In, indeed, when I buy a new PC in a computer store or whatnot, if they won't let me boot a copy of a live Linux distro, no deal. I that that's make it or break it for me. Um, the um, thumb drives are very useful. Um, they can um, you can you can use those to. Um, um, move data between machines. You can actually um, install the operating system on a thumb drive. I will say I've never actually um, never actually done that myself. Not properly. Uh, Nopix, yes, but um, but other other OSs I haven't uh, installed to a thumb drive. But it's doable and it looks like quite a good system to me. Um, Secondary hard drives are also a, a good way to go. I use lots of hard drives and lots of secondary hard drives. One of the problems with Linux, probably the worst, worst problem is wireless is not well supported with Linux. Um, wired uh, internet is almost every card in the world works with Linux. Um, Video cards now work quite well with Linux, uh, including um, ones with 3D acceleration and the whole bit. Um, most things work with Linux, but um, wireless cards don't work perfect with Linux. There's a few ways around that. There are ways to use the Windows drivers to um, get Windows or uh, to um, under Linux. I've actually never done that. Uh, it doesn't look too hard, but I, I've never done that. Um, another thing you can do is buy a wireless card that does work for Linux. There are a few. I've had good luck with D-Link cards myself. D-Link seems to care a lot more about Linux than um, than um, um, 
Linksys and and some other companies, but uh, but there's no guarantees. The other thing that I usually have around is a couple of these little guys. What these are, it, whoop, is they're game cards or are they're sold to the game committee? And um, they um, they're sold to the game community because a lot of game machines have uh, don't have wireless built in or at least didn't have wireless so what they do is they have a wire that um, that um, is meant to plug into your wired internet and that will work with virtually any game or uh, virtually any any um, computer because Linux is good with wired internet, so it sees this device as being at the end of the wired internet. There's a little configuration program to configure it um, so that it can do the wireless thing, but that, that comes up in a web browser. It's all really cool. Um, unfortunately, you do need external power for these guys because it can't get power through the network cable, so you either have to waste a USB port to uh, give it power with USB or a lot of these come with an external adapter that can be plugged in uh, if you've got if you've got um, oh man if you've got um, a wired connection for it uh, even that is a little bit of hassle with a laptop but it works fine with a desktop that's sitting on the other side of your house from the wireless connector or or you're using your neighbor's wireless connector or or whatever okay I think that's about everything I have to say um, uh, I will add a couple videos maybe on uh, distributions and things like that but uh, that's it for now bye bye